now for night courts and the case of an Alabama man who was arrested for putting flowers in this flower box on his fiance's grave. Winchester Higgins lost his fiance Hannah Ford in a car crash in January of last year. He wanted to honor her with a flower box that's decorated with their engagement pictures, but every time he put one there, somebody kept throwing the box away and the flowers away again and again and again. Now, last month, Hagens was arrested for criminal littering on the gravesite, which, by the way, is actually owned by his late fiance's father. That's where it gets interesting. Time to bring in our legal eagles, criminal defense attorneys Bob Bianchi and Brian Claypool. Great to have you back, gentlemen. Great to be here, Shannon. Hi, Thank Shannon. you. Here we go with Exhibit A. This is a criminal complaint that the father signed. Um, Hayden Thomas Ford is the property owner of his daughter, Hannah Ford, cemetery plot located at Memorial Park in Auburn, Alabama. Approximately seven to eight flower boxes have been placed on Hannah's gravesite without his permission. Winston Hagens, by the way, the guy's name's Winchester, so I don't know if that's a nickname or something. But anyway, um, Winston Hagens has been advised not to place unauthorized items on Hannah's grave. So, Bob, if they told him not to do it, and he's done it seven or eight times, um, any surprise that this guy went and filed a criminal complaint? Now, this is crazy, Shannon, and this should never have been filed. The bottom line to this is there has to be probable cause. He is charged with littering. I actually took the time tonight for you, Shannon, to look the <laughs> definition up of littering in Alabama, and it says rubbish, refuse, waste material, garbage, dead animals, glass, cans, debris, et cetera, and so forth, not flowers. So how a judicial magistrate or a clerk establish probable cause for flowers and not those other things which are required under the law tells me Reverend got friends. Mm. And that is the Reverend being the father, because that's the only way as a former prosecutor looking at this, the way this went down. You want to talk about rubbish? This complaint is rubbish. It's really kind of outrageous from a moral point of view and from a legal point of view. And I would just cite two laws that I think are really important with this as a final point, Shannon. Love thy neighbor and do on to others. Well, there is definitely some tension between the man and the family of his late fiance. This is what he says in a statement, Exhibit B. He says, I would just want to be able to put flowers on her grave and for her father to give me back the engagement ring, which he promised to do, and we never have to think about each other again. Brian. Hey, Shannon. Hey, Bob. You're a former federal prosecutor. Didn't you prosecute, prosecute. cases based on the letter? The letter of the law. Well, if you read, by the way, I did the same thing you did. Let's arm wrestle. We both read the law. But guess what? At the end of that law you were reading, there was a catch all that said criminal littering is all of the above you said or any other foreign substance. So there's hmm. a catch all. And the Florence, argument can be flower. made that this flower, this flower case <laughs> is a foreign substance on private property. This is a private burial plot. So the law does support criminal trespassing. The issue is, should the dad have done this? Well, we've got a ring dispute, but don't shoot the messenger. The law is the law, and we've got to enforce it. Okay, that takes us to Exhibit C, and this is the police statement on this whole thing. They say in Alabama, certain burial plots are owned and controlled by the family of the deceased and therefore are private property. Any citizen has a right to pursue a criminal charge upon showing sufficient probable cause exists to believe a crime has been committed. Bob. Yeah, this isn't a crime, and, and with all due respect to my good friend Brian, and it's a great, he's a great lawyer and he makes a great argument. If Brian were the defense attorney in this case, he'd be coming to me as a prosecutor saying, Bob, this is, even if it's a violation, which I don't believe it is, this is a de minimis offense. You know, when you do this job as a prosecutor or a police officer, and I know Brian knows this, you've got to use the rule of reason. You don't just go by the letter of the law. What I would have done in a case like this, and I did it many times before if there was a dispute, is I contact the parties. I say, listen, if he doesn't put any more flowers there, and it, are you okay with that? Do we really want to issue a warrant mm. for his arrest over putting flowers there? So th right. that's where law enforcement made the mistake. Let me get, give Brian, give you a chance to have the final word before we got to go. Yeah, the, the, only, the only problem with that argument, Bob, and thanks for the compliment, is that this happened, like Shannon said, seven or eight times. So at some point, you've got to put it to an end, and sometimes you need the force of the law, you need a warrant, you need an arrest to stop somebody from this ongoing illegal behavior. Well, I think the trial is coming up soon, so we will track it and find out whether this goes away or goes to a jury. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. Thank you, Shadow.